If you want to learn about giant tsunamis, it's best to bring them down to size. That's what these waves and this scale version of the town of Seaside, Oregon are all about. And when engineers pounded it with a mini tsunami, they learned something really surprising. More on that in a moment. But first, you might be surprised to know tsunamis are a looming threat for the west coast of the U.S. The likelihood of having a tsunami here on our coast is about one in seven chance in the next 50 years of having a tsunami the same size of what we saw in 2004. So that's huge. Civil engineer Dan Cox is director of the Hinsdale Wave Lab at Oregon State a part of the National Science Foundation's network for earthquake engineering simulation. In the field, they see the before and after. This allows us to see the during. The so wave breaks off the coast. This was an aluminum wall. And what would be the impact of that telephone pole if it hit a building? After the devastation of Hurricane Katrina and the Asian tsunami that killed more than 200,000 in 2004, Cox and his colleagues stepped up efforts to learn more about natural disasters. That's why they created physical and computer models of the town of Seaside, which brings us back to the surprise. When they pounded it with a tsunami, Cox found that if all the residents simply headed inland... The casualty count was 1,700. So out of 5,000, we lost 1,700. That startling death rate got him thinking about a different path to safety. The role of vertical evacuation. So this means going up into a building or onto a earthen mound. You're still gonna be in the flooded zone, but you're much safer just by going up. When they added vertical evacuation to the test. You can see that the casualty count is really low. It's only 200 compared to the 1700. And perhaps more importantly, it proves the model for good engineering is not simply defining problems, it's about solving them and making some waves. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.